All right, tech fans from around the world, it's that time once again. Time for some Ryzen action. That's right, this time we're gonna have the 1500X and the 1600X on the table. Big difference between the two? Well, the one that's under $200, $189 for the 1500X, four core, eight thread, great CPU for the price. Then you're gonna have the 1600X, bit more expensive, 249, but six cores, 12 threads. A lot of cool stuff here. With that said though, let's just talk a little bit about what this entire launch is about. Obviously Intel has their i5 lineup and there's nothing right now that's going to be able to be touched by the Ryzen 1600X at its price point. It's gonna have more cores, but the thing is how often right now in today's age is having six cores versus four cores going to affect performance and like a lot of the stuff you do. Now, obviously I know there will be a few tasks out there that do it that's going to take advantage of that, but I don't think across the board just having a little bit more cores is going to be the winning advantage right now. But with that said though, let's jump in. Let's check out these two brand new CPUs. These are both the X series. In fact, everything we're testing today is all X series. You can call it the battle of the X's and all my X's don't live in Texas, but hey, that's just the way it goes. So let's jump right in real quick. Let's check out these two CPUs. Let's check out the performance. I told you guys the pricing and stuff up front and all the people like that, but we'll talk a little more about everything in the conclusion. So let's go. So let's start out with a 1600X. This is a 95 watt TDP CPU, features 16 megabytes of level three cache, 512 level two cache per core, 3.6 gigahertz base clock, 3.7 gigahertz all core boost, 4.0 gigahertz two core boost, and 4.1 gigahertz with XFR. Next up, the Ryzen 5 1500X. Now this CPU has 65 watts TDP, 16 megabytes of level three cache, 512K level two cache per core. This one has a 3.5 gigahertz base, 3.6 gigahertz all core boost, 3.7 gigahertz or the two core boost and 3.9 gigahertz with XFR. So you guys can see the really main difference that I feel is the TDP. Because when you don't have to send a lot of voltage to your CPU to make it work good, that lends a lot of headroom for overclocking. So right now, I just gotta say, for me, specs alone, I don't see really that much difference between the two. What I see is $189 versus $249. What do you guys think? So, okay, there's the differences between the CPUs in layman's terms. Now, as far as our test systems go, if you guys follow the channel, you know that we've previously built two badass systems based on the Ryzen technology. The Ryzen 7, we built an 1800X system and a 1700X system. One of them was the Phoenix Rising system and the other one is the producer. Those are the systems that we continue to test and I know some people out there are probably wondering why I didn't use the lower, you know, the B350 chipset or whatever. I decided that since I already had the scores going before with that chipset, we'd see how those CPUs looked in these systems as it is. I'll be building a complete different system based on the lower end motherboards and bringing those systems and builds to the table. But for right now, I wanted to be able to keep everything with the 1800, with the 1700, the 1600 and the 1500 all in the same way for you guys to check out. Out. So with that said, if you guys know the channel, you guys know the systems, by the way, we'll have links down below if you guys want to get more information about that. But that said, let's jump in and let's actually see what the gaming performance differences are and a few wee bit of things as far as doing multitasking and stuff like that goes. Let's rock.
One thing definitely worth mentioning. The 1500X, even though it's only being cooled on air, is running incredibly cool. There's just so much room on the 1500X for upping that voltage and pumping that bad boy up to see what we can maximum get out of that CPU. I gotta say, the 1600X, it's doing pretty good. But the 1500X on air cooling, you guys can see, this CPU is just running incredibly cool. And I'm quite impressed with that because AMD is traditionally known to be running things hot. In fact, if you guys have ever seen some of my videos, I always make little jokes about that and stuff and so does everybody else. But it seems like AMD has turned the tide and the 1500X is one damn cool running CPU. All right, folks, so there you have it. Pretty much the battle of the X's. Now, in my opinion, I'm thinking the 1500X is definitely a nice, 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 nice CPU under $200, gaming scores only slightly lower even than the top of the line CPU. Even when you guys see the top of the line 1800X all the way down to this, you can see there's only a few frames per second in difference. So if you're a gamer and a streamer, this is definitely a CPU you wanna check out, especially if you're on a budget. Cause let's just face it, I've said it before, a lot of people out there, we've now found out Egypt, Jamaica, all kinds of people out there don't really have access to technology, Australia, very expensive stuff. So when you gotta pay big bucks out of your pocket to get technology, I know that you want to get the absolute best bang for your buck. My next video I'm going to focus on is doing all the overclocking. I haven't really been focusing all that too much stuff lately. To be quite honest with all you folks, I've had serious health issues lately, have not been feeling that good. I don't think I've done my absolute best, but I'm going to try to shoot for better in the future. But for right now, you guys can see the differences between these CPUs all the way down from top to bottom. Not that much of a difference as far as gaming goes whatsoever. And like I said, you can overclock these CPUs. They're doing okay. They're not not doing the best in the world from what I'm seeing, but you know, everything's, you know, a, a little bit different. Every CPU is a little bit different. Results are going to vary, obviously, with new technology, with new drivers, with new processing stuff that's coming out. Hopefully, with all that, you'll get better overclocking results in the future. We're going to do all of our overclocking stuff tomorrow, so we'll bring you all those CPUs to overclock and see what the difference is, all dedicated. But at the end of the day, I have to say, my personal favorite out of this bunch is definitely the 1500X. Like I said, price versus performance. You can overclock this thing right out of the box. It does, you know, halfway decent overclock. And if you want to go ahead and get crazy with liquid cooling and all that stuff, I'm sure results will be even better. So thanks for watching Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Elric. Thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you guys like this video. Like I said, man, AMD has a lot of releases out. Vegas coming around the corner too. So you guys who are out there who are strict AMD fans, you've got a lot of shit to be looking forward to, sons. We'll see you back here on Tech of Tomorrow. Like usual, underneath that like button, all the information. If you're not subbed, you know what to do and turn on those notifications because you want to be notified that this video is here for you.